One of the great things about WordPress is that you can change the look and feel of your website by changing the theme. But the problem is themes don't always behave exactly as we would like. For example, here on my personal website, you can see that this text here in the main body of the theme is gray. It's not black and I like black on a white background. There are similar problems over in the sidebar where this link text here, my recent posts, is also grey and I would like that black. And those are links and I actually like important links underlined so that visitors know they are links. This link up here goes to a category page and that isn't important because that is only there really for the search engines to be able to find that category page. I'm not bothered about my visitors finding that category page or that category page or that category page. I'd rather that wasn't underlined. If we look on the sidebar again, you can see that this widget, this categories widget has a categories title, then categories, and then it's got the widget and that just looks unprofessional. And yet all I've done is I've added the widget. I haven't added a title to the widget and this is what is being displayed on my site. You can see that all of these descriptions here, they're all gray as well. And that again, I don't like gray on a white background. I'd probably like these icons up here. These are actually fonts, but I would like those to be more white perhaps, or a color of my choosing rather than just the dull gray that they are right now, as is the follow there. So there's lots of things I would like to change. Depending on the theme that you've got, you might be able to customize a lot of the changes from within the theme settings itself, especially if you know a little bit about CSS. But what if you don't know any CSS? Well, there's a great plugin available and it's called CSS Hero. And I started playing with this today and I really like it. And I'm actually going to take it for a test spin and show you how I can change those things on my site that I don't like by using this plugin. But before we do, I want to just point something out because if you scroll down, you'll see the costs of the licenses. A one site license starts at $29 billed per year. Now that isn't a recurring billing. You're not automatically going to get billed next year. It's a one off payment. But at the end of the one year, your support contract, if you like, finishes. That means you won't be able to get new versions. You won't be able to get support and you won't be able to install the plugin on any new sites unless you renew. But on any sites where the plugin is installed, it will continue working. The other thing I should mention, if you look here, this is my CSS Hero login where I've logged in to download the copy of CSS Hero. You can see I've got remaining licenses one and I've only bought one license, but you can see here used and available licenses used one of two. So how have I got two licenses? Well, quite simply, I bought one license for $29 and then I paid with a share. I simply tweeted out a link or a Twitter tweet and in return CSS Hero gave me a second license. So I have a second license to install somewhere. So that's what I would recommend you do. If you want to have a go and you've got a couple of sites you want to put it on, then buy one license and tweet out a link and get a second license for free. So let me close that and I'm going to close that and we're going to go here into my dashboard of my site. You can see I'm on the settings for CSS Hero. And you can see we've got an export import. So you can actually set this up on one site, export it and then import, import your personalized file into another website if you want to. So that is really good. In order to activate CSS Hero to start working on your site, you just need to click the link up here, CSS Hero in the admin bar at the top. And it will take a moment or two. It'll load your site and it will load CSS Hero so you can start working and customizing your theme. So here's my website. And you can see the customization bar over here on the right. One thing I should say is that CSS Hero is optimized to work with a whole bunch of themes and you can see which themes it can work with on their CSS Hero website. But some themes aren't natively supported and this particular one that I'm using isn't natively supported. But it doesn't mean to say I can't use CSS Hero. The way it works is that you click on this little circle at the top and then when you do, you can then go and click on elements of your page and it will then bring up the options and you'll see that in a moment. But because this theme isn't natively supported. If I click on that, you can see I get a message here saying native support for this theme is not available. Want to try rocket mode auto detection and this is in beta, but from my testing, it's been working really well. So all I need to do is click on the activate rocket mode and then it's going to reload it. 
but this time it will work properly with my theme. There we are, it's now loaded and I can now click on that to click on elements. But before we do, I just want to show you this second button because this second button allows you to view your site in different size browsers, which is pretty cool. I'm going to go back to full desktop. All right, now let's start off with some optimizations or customizations for my website. And one thing I wanted to do is get rid of this categories here, right above the drop down box. Now, I don't know why this is happening. If I go over to my dashboard, I'll show you how this is set up inside the widgets. You can see I've got categories there. I haven't got a title. Let's have a look, see what happens if I put a title in there. We'll call it categories. Oops, if I can spell. Click on save. And then we'll go and have a look, see what that looks like on the site. Okay, it just added categories again, and it's not what I want. I don't want a title in there. So one solution from a CSS point of view would be to make that categories text the same color as the background. So let's click on the little circle and I'm going to select that categories text. You can see when you move your mouse over, you've got a bar at the top that basically allows you to copy the style. It also tells you what the style is. This one is screen reader text. Okay, I'm going to click on it and then over on the right, opens up the various options and most of the time what you want is the very top one because these are related to but not essentially not the element you've clicked on. The very top item will be the element you clicked on and the way CSS works is cascading style sheets. Some of these will be relevant to things that are around the sidebar over here. But we're going to just focus on the screen reader text which focuses on that categories text and we can click on that and then we can change the options and what I want to change is the text option. As you can see, that text there, categories text, is this dark grey. And I can change the colour. And as you, I change it here, you can see that it's actually changing over in the sidebar. See, it's changed over here. What I need to do is I need to find out exactly what colour this background sidebar is. And to do that, I use a free tool called Colour Pick. And I'm going to just click on one of these, move my mouse over to the sidebar, Control G, and now that's copied. So look, and try again, control G. There we go, got it now. So this is the gray here. I'm going to copy that and I can close that now. Go over to, let me click on the back button. What I want to do is click back on that text, screen reader text, go down to text and all I'm going to do is delete what's in there, click on save and as you can see now that text has now disappeared. It might be nice if I could actually move this drop down box up a little bit because there's a bit of a space between categories and text. So what I can do is I can go back, select that text again and this time I can play around with the padding. But the padding is all set to zero anyway so let's try something a little bit different let's try text size what I can do is I can minimize the text size and as I do watch what happens to the drop down box see if I increase the text size the drop down box goes down if I reduce it the drop down box goes back up so I can save that now so there's one customization we've got another one of those down in the footer down here, this interests. So I'm going to do the same thing for that. Screen reader text. And I can actually click the all button here and I can get all of the styles and everything else all in one screen. I'm going to make that white. And font size, I'm going to reduce that right down. And as you can see now, that has moved everything into the correct area. Okay, let's go to the sidebar over here now. We're going to change this font. So let me just click on this. This is div list item link. So this is a list item link. Click on that and we're going to select text. And first thing I want to do is I want to change the color to black. And I also want to make it one opacity. 
that means it, it's if you watch what happens if I change the opacity, reduce the opacity, it goes grey, it becomes wishy-washy. I want it full opacity. That's that set. And we can also set down here text decoration so I can underline stuff if I want to. The next thing I want to have a look at is this link, this category link here and these category links here to turn them so that they're not underlined and they're not blue because I want to make them a little bit less conspicuous. They're not important for the visitors. They're only really there so that search engines can find the category pages. So let's start with that first one. We'll select it and it's the group paragraph link. We want the text properties. I want to remove the underline. So we'll just click on normal. You see the underline is now gone. And I also want to change the color. So we'll change it to 484850. Okay. And now if I come down, I can do the same for the other links. Change the paragraph, text. Let's just delete that. 484850. And I want to scroll down a little bit to get rid of the underline. And then we click on save. And you can see that those now are correct. What you can actually do is you can copy and paste styles. But what I found is using the screen recording software that I'm using, if I try and copy and paste styles, more often than not, there is a problem or two doing that. But to copy a style, you would essentially select the item, go up to copy style, and then a green bar will appear, which is the paste, and then you can click onto another one and paste that style. It does normally work if the recording isn't being taken place, but um, as I said, in this case, the screen recorder seems to mess this up. So the next thing I want to do then is this text. I want to make that black. Again, I'm going to click on all because then this will give me access to all of the settings. I want to just go down to black, opacity one, click on save. And again, this is the top um, box here, which shows a description, a, a big image and a description. These little ones down here are different, so I need to do these ones separately on this particular theme. So let's select it. I'm going to go and make this black as well. Opacity 1, click on Save, and you can see that now. We've now got that set correctly. So we have a little look now. One thing I don't like is this, these buttons have now gone black. Something I've set, some of the text that I've set has obviously made these buttons go black. Those are based on fonts. If they were based on images, there's nothing I could do about it because those are actually fonts that decide those shapes. I can change that. I can change this so that just the CSS affecting these is different. And we'll make that white. That's what I think I want, white. And I also want to change that follow to make it whiter. And opacity. Okay, so now I've changed those. Let's have a little look down the page now. We've got the links in the side, we've got the text black, we've got rid of the underlines for the category pages, and everything else down here looks fine. There is some text down here, which is difficult to see because it's the wrong color. So let's just change that. Copyright paragraph text. Let's change that to white. Click on save and I think that's about it for the home page. I think I'm quite happy with that. What I would like to do, though, is maybe click through to one of the pages internal pages of the website and just check to make sure everything is okay there as well. So here I am on the internal page and my text down here looks decidedly grey so let's change the bio description text to black full opacity click on save. Let's have a little look up here and that text is OK. Over on this sidebar here, these are, are rather big, these items here. I could actually reduce them. But also the next story and previous story, I would like to change that slightly. I'm going to change that to black. And if I scroll down a little bit, I might even change the font. Let's change it to Open Sans if we've got it. 
Okay, open sans. And actually, I'm going to make that bolder. Okay, you can see it changing as I make the changes there. Change the slot, you can change the size if you want to. And I can transform the text if I want. I can have no capitalization, capitalization. That's the cap first letters capitalized, and that's no capitalization. So I can change how that appears if I want to. And I can align the text. What I could do is I could put the next over this side and the previous over the back side. But I'm going to leave that as it is for the moment. See the line height I can change. If I want to change the way that's spread out. Let's just save that. And now I'm going to have a go at the copy and paste and we'll see whether it actually works. Let's go up to the new story and then go across to copy the style. And then I should be able to come down here, paste the style. There we go. It has pasted all right this time. So we've now just copied and pasted the style. I can save that. And once it's reloaded, you can see that is now working fine. The other thing I want to do just briefly, I want to see whether I can reduce the size of this. And it's the next link. And we're going to go down and have a look at padding. And let's have a look at top padding. Okay, I can reduce the top padding. You see that that is moving it down. And also the bottom padding. We just increase the top padding slightly. Okay, that's a little bit better. Let's just make the top padding 20 and the bottom padding is zero. Okay, save that. And then we're going to repeat it for the previous story just to resize that one slightly as well. So we select the previous story, previous link, down to padding and top padding. Let's have a look. Okay, the top padding we're going to put that to 20 and the bottom padding to zero. And that just squishes that up slightly there as well. And we'll save. Now there's one more thing that I noticed and that was down here, this uh, related posts here. We've got the hyperlink to the article and then the description. The description shouldn't be underlined, but obviously something that we've done when we've been changing the settings has made it underlined. So we're going to reverse that. We're going to change that. So let's go and we want to select the whole list item. So we need to be a little bit careful. We don't want to select just the link or the description. We want to let's come down to the last one because there's some white space. If I move my mouse down, you can see that the box now down here is surrounding item number four. So I'm going to select all of that and go up to the top item text and remove the text decoration and then click on save and you see that now is, has been fixed fine. So that's really just the surface of CSS Hero that I've shown you and using the plugin I've managed to customize my theme so that it now behaves the way I want it to behave and I could go on with more options that are available but I'm going to leave it there because this video has already been long enough.